All right, today I'm gonna to be making uh, pretzel rolls. Um, got these, this recipe off the internet. Um, it's just one of the first ones I found and it sounded really good. So what you need, um, you need one tablespoon of instant yeast, which is just a packet of yeast, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, two cups of warm milk, and I just microwaved it until it got to the temperature of 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I measured it with a thermometer. Same thing for the water, one and a half cups of warm water, about the same temperature two teaspoons of salt, and anywhere from six and a half to eight cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. That's what you need original, for the dough at least. So what are you gonna do first is, I've got an electric mixer, you can do it by hand, but it just, just know it takes a little longer. Um, so we're gonna add our yeast, which is always uh, hilarious because it's got all this uh, stack cling in it. And your oil, and your milk. and your water. I've got my uh, dough hook. And I'm just gonna mix it real, just real quick just to kind of get it uh, stirred up a little bit. And I add my salt while that's going. And then you're gonna add um, Two cups of flour, so I've got a half a cup here. And you also want to make sure you have a um, a greased bowl ready. I've just got a um, just a big bowl here with uh, cooking spray sprayed in it, just to make sure uh, you're ready once you're ready to go. So there's half. There's one. One and a half. And two. Just a slow process so we're going to gradually add more flour up to eight cups until a soft dough is formed um, and you're only going to need it for like three to four minutes so you don't want to need it for a really long time um, you want it to be about the consistency of like bagel dough you don't want it to be really sticky but it, you want it to be a little stiff too and i may have to um scrape down the side because it's sticking to the side This is just to kind of get it um, pulled together a little bit. too much for this bowl to handle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knead it by hand. Um, so just get a floured surface. It was trying to climb the dough hook is what the deal was. And that makes a lot of dough. Flour my hands a bit. So I'm just gonna do this for a little while. Oh yeah, that feels like a good dough. Feels pretty good. So I'm gonna take my bowl, I'm gonna put it in there, and I usually just put it in there and roll it around a little bit to get a little bit more oil on it. And I'm gonna put plastic wrap over top of this, and um, I'm gonna let it proof for an hour or two until it doubles in size. Okay, you definitely see my dough has doubled. I mean, it's that's a big dough. Um, what I did was, this: the kitchen's a little cool this time of year, so what I did was I actually used the proofing um, function on my oven, and I've never done that before, but it worked really, really well. I think the temperature in the oven is right around um, 75, 80 degrees is what it t heats it up to, and you see it really, really did work. Um, it stayed in there just a little over an hour, maybe, what, an hour and 10 minutes, maybe, something like that. Um, but you, you can see the dough looks really, really good. So what I've done to prep, I've got a piece of parchment paper. You could use a, a floured surface if you want to. I think parchment paper would be easier. It's slightly greased. I just sprayed some of this vegetable oil on it just to keep it from sticking. So I've got that. I'm going to lay all these out once I get them all set up. 
I've got a scale because I'm going to try to make them somewhat even. I'm going to shoot for about two ounces is what uh, most people are saying you should get a nice dinner roll. I've got baking sheets set up with parchment paper and lightly sprayed. That'll be for in just a few. And then um, I can show you this in a little bit, but basically I have um, three quarts of water and then I've got, uh, let me see my recipe. And I've got a um, tablespoon of sugar and a fourth of a cup of baking soda, which I'm going to use in a little bit. And then I'll get out some coarse salt here in just a minute too. So right now what I want to do is just basically punch your dough down. That feels so good. And I'm going to pull off, my scale went off. Um, I'm going to pull off two ounce. That's probably good enough. 2.3. And then literally I'm going to sit here and, and you kind of lay it on the, on the counter and you make a cup and you leave your pinky on the counter at all times and you just roll it. And it takes about, I don't know, 10 or 15 times around. And you can do this with both hands if you want to, but you don't want any flour on your surface. You don't want any, um, um, oil or anything like that really like oil greased up because you want it to stick a little bit. So once you get these balls, which that looks pretty good and it's got a little pucker on the bottom if you want to keep going and I'm pushing down just a little bit to give it a little bit of a pressure. And then once you do that, you're just going to take that and just sit it back here on your greased parchment paper and then get out another one. So I'm you're supposed to get 16 of these, 2.35. I'm getting really good at the 2.35. Um, you're supposed to get 16 of these, so um, I'm gonna keep doing this until I get all these divided up into um, balls and then I'll be back. these are two ounces or 2.3 somewhere around there um, I've still got a ton of dough left and you're only supposed to get 16 out of this so I'm assuming these rolls are supposed to be bigger so I'm gonna make 10 that way and I'm gonna make the other ones probably around three and a half ounces see if I can get some more um, some fewer out of this because I think these are there's pretzel rolls but they're supposed to be like you could use these for sliders or you could use them for dinner rolls you can use them for anything I think two ounces may just be a little um, small for this type of roll. So I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. That looks probably better, but I'm going to, uh, once I do them, I will, um, I'll make sure I, um, perfect, uh, put them on different size pans because it's going to take a little different time to, to cook them. kills Tammy but the uh, the ones I did beforehand the tens I don't like the size of them so I'm going to actually recombine them into this dough do now. Um, I'm just gonna recombine them and I'm gonna roll these out to be bigger and I know that probably kills some of you but I would much rather have them all the same I'm just like that um, so I would much rather spend the extra time making them all the same then to have some small, some large, I, I just, I'm just gonna spend the time doing it. So I'm just gonna keep on, this one's not very rolled up very well. What did I get? 4, 8, 16, 7, 8, 9, 20, 21, 22 instead of 16. I think if I'd went up on up to four ounces, I think I would have been fine. I would have had 16, but it's okay. So these you're supposed to cover them. So I've just got a dish towel. And I'm going to cover them lightly. All right. Now what I'm going to do with my water is I'm going to take my water. I'm going to start it boiling. So I'm going to turn on high and I'm going to put my baking soda. and my one fourth cup of baking soda and my one tablespoon of salt. 
and I'm going to bring this to a boil while those are uh, resting for 15 minutes. All right, you can see my water's boiling. Uh, you want your oven preheated to 425, so do that. So what you're going to do is just pick up one of these balls, turn it upside down in your hand, and where the little, uh, all the wrinkly part is, just on the outside of it, just pucker it a little bit to where you grab it, and then lay it in there. And you want to only do like two or three of these at a time. What you want to do is you want to make the top be kind of tight. Toit. And about 30 seconds per side. That's why I said don't do a ton of these. Um, you also want a uh, some kind of sharp knife and some coarse salt. So uh, I'll show you in just a second. I'm going to flip these over. I may have pinched some of these a little too much. You got to remember this is the first time I'm making these. So you can do them up to a minute. The longer you leave them in the water, the, the, like the chewier the outside is. So just keep that in mind. Okay, this one's probably been in there long enough. So I got this little scoop spatula that I can kind of take off and get, get all the water you can off and just lay it on your pan uh, with the grease lined parchment paper. And I'm literally just going to do like three of these at a time and I'll show you what you do next and then I'll, I'll continue with the rest of them. The dough feels so funny. Um, you're not used to feeling like a wet dough like that. So what you want to do is take your razor blade and just cut like two times across each one of them. And you don't want to deflate them so you got to just get make sure you, you don't press them too hard. And then sprinkle some, I just got a bowl full of coarse salt, just sprinkle some on top. I like mine pretty salty, so, and if you get them when they're still a little wet, the salt will stick to them really good. So I'm just going to continue this process um, with the rest of them. All right, here's what they look like. Um, they're all done and ready to go. So I'm going to put these in the oven. Again, 425, they go in for 20 to 25 or 20 to 22 minutes until they're dark brown on the outside. So I'll get these in the oven and I'll show you when they come out. All right, here they are out of the oven, perfect coloring. Um, there's a couple that are a little lighter, but I think they're overall, they're really good. And they may even darken up a little as they sit here. 20 minutes is what I left them in there for. Cuts look like they're good and, and solid. So I mean, I like that, I'm proud of these things. So um, once they've cooled off just a little bit enough where we can touch them and use them, um, then uh, we'll try them out. Okay, we have some of the. Oh yeah, they made a ton. A ton, yeah. There's They're stacked a up. A handful, over there. yeah. Well, you counted them a while ago. So we're we gonna try them plain and then put some butter yeah. on them. Yeah, I'm gonna just take one and pull it apart. They're huge. It is truly like you would have these for dinner, or and you. Um, yeah, those look good on the inside. You know the website you got this from, right? So we're gonna put it in the description. It's, yeah, it's like Mel's Kitchen something. I'll put it in the description below. That way you can go there and print out the recipe. Hmm. I like the flavor though. Mm -hmm. It's good. Very salty. It reminds me of a soft pretzel. Uh huh. But you know what it also reminds me of? Do you remember years and years ago, years like decades ago, when we had a bread machine? Yeah, yeah. Does that kind of remind you of that same texture and flavor? Yes, yeah. I think it's good. I want to try some with. I do too. I want to see. I think you could make literally put. Uh, you could put like meat on this if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like a sandwich. Oh yeah. No, that's very good. Mm. I love it with butter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course I do. So what do you think about the outside? Would you consider that a pretzel, a pretzel-y outside, like the mm -hmm. chewiness? Yes. You get that chewy on the outside? Yes. Kind of a tough skin? It reminds me, um, you know, when you get one of those giant pretzels, like at Auntie Anne's or something in the mall, that kind of um, texture, that's the texture it reminds me. Yeah, well, it's very, very good. I like it. Mm -hmm. So, my question is, though, do you think it's worth the effort? 
I think it's worth the effort um, if you're feeding a lot of people um, or if you're going to be eating a lot of them yourself. Sure, if you're going to go, if you're going to, um, um, I mean, for us, this is not the type of thing we eat all the time. Mm -hmm. So No, we don't eat a lot of bread except for sandwiches. But if we were going to have people over or something like that and make a lot of sandwiches, then yeah. Some of them. I noticed one bite I took had a lot of salt on, and the other one not so much. So I would just be more careful with salt because <laughs> mm. you don't want too much. So if you were gonna make these into a sandwich, how would you cut them? Would you cut them in half like that, or would you? Try I cut them that way. You cut them? No, sideways. Oh, cut so them like this. Like a regular roll. Yeah, I'm just okay. cut them like halfway down. Just cut them with one of those bread knives with a right. like, like a saw. Right. Looks like a saw. And just cut it in half. These are probably a little big. And a little dense for a sandwich because um, I noticed the inside um, it springs back though so it's not it reminds me of a regular uh, I've fries. seen uh, yeah. or Hollywood I've seen him take his thumb his finger and push into it and it just yes. like compresses uh -huh. well these don't it bounces back so that tells me it's it's pretty good and springy they are a little it's a little close mm -hmm. but it's not um it's not super super like dense and hard so I think he could be in the bake off with these uh, probably you would now would I remember how to make these <laughs> I even have to have a recipe. I have to have my recipe, but I think these are good. I like them. Yeah. So, hopefully you enjoyed the video. We might try to do other breads down the road in the future. I enjoy making. Because there are other breads that I would like Kevin to make that he's made in the past, but he's never made for a video. So, I think you all would really like them. Uh, but now, he did do focaccia bread uh, for a video, for a YouTube video. So, if you haven't watched that... Uh, he did that and really it, it is absolutely awesome. So, but I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.